Hello there guys, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we're going to show you is uh, a fix. Uh, this is actually Jay's job and we're in San Francisco. I, he's coming here to do some work and I was coming here to do something extra. So I just met him here. What Jason showed me last night, he was at the house and he says, Hey dad, take a look at a job I'm going to do tomorrow. And he showed me it on his phone. He said about a bucket of mud. And I thought, well, eh, looks like about a bucket of mud to me. But I'm no spring chicken, so I couldn't see it well. I said, do you, are, do you know how to send this to the computer? So he sent it to the computer. And, and last night I said, hey, Jay, you better come take a look at the computer. and Let me show you something on here. And oh, on the computer, we could see clearly that this, he's, he's using J trim on this particular job. Now, J trim is, it's a good product. It's this stuff right here. They call it corner bead or, or corner bead in a lot of other states, Canada and stuff. We call it J trim here in California. Anyhow, there's J trim here and then there's what we thought was J trim here. And I thought, well, gee, according to the computer, you could see it. This is way off. If this is off, this is off. This corner is off. And I'll show you what I'm referring to. Since you're on that side, that corner here is supposed to line up with this corner. So we got a huge gap here. I'm sticking my finger through this gap. So that's all got to be true and plumb. So what we come up with is the reason that top piece is so far off is I looked at it and I said, man, this is a drip screen for a product called Drive It. And you put insulation board. And this is usually about an inch and a half. And Jay says, how do you know that? And I said, well, I used to use it all the time. And besides, I can look at the screed he used, and that's a drive it uh, drip screed. He just turned it upside down and put it right there. So anyhow, the fella here did a pretty nice job. He watched our videos. He did the uh, mesh using a rib lath, which you can use a rib lath. Let's see. He used a rib lath, and yeah, there's different ways to put this on. The right way is this way. So he rib lathed it. He did a scratch coat and a brown coat. He did the best he could and on a scale of 1 to 10 I think it's pretty good. The corner here is of course off too. This is way off. Now I am prepared. Jason and I are pretty good at screeding work. We can put a, a screed here and make a new corner or I can just take a hammer which I, I am going to do and just pop this right off. I'm getting rid of this because it's not right. Anyway, before I get rid of it, I'm going to put my glasses on and a mask and just take that whole thing off. And I'm just going to install a new corner. It's a lot faster for me. But anyhow, as far as using rod work, we're no stranger to it. We used to use these, uh, when I was working Union, we'd come to houses we would spray. When I was working with Danny Smith Plaster and my buddy Fred Smith, uh, he was one of the best plasters I ever met. When it would come to a corner where missing, say, 8 feet or 10 feet of corner aid, Fred would say, hey, Kirk, go grab the um, rod off the truck. We call them rods here in California. They're called T-bars in Australia. You put a, a rod up, two guys hold it, one at each angle, say one at the top of the scaffold, one at the bottom, and you just build a, a corner, leave it alone, go around, finish the building, then come back, and that'll be set. And that's what we call rodding a corner. You'll see it how we do that. But we're going to go ahead and get started here. Jay's going to mix up and between uh, the two of us we're going to uh, re-skim it then we're going to give it the proper finish this is what we call a, a heavy float finish so that's where we're at and one last thing too because because this screed here doesn't align with this i'm going to fill this up tighter and prior to filling that tighter we want to fill this hole right here before i put cement on it little things like that are, make a huge difference a little bit of caulk in there and then we go ahead and fill that guy right there anyhow we're going to get prepared and bust this corner out when you see us again we're going to be spreading this out okay guys i have decided it's way faster for me to put new corners on than to try to build this out as you look underneath it was so bubbled up so it took me like five minutes to pop that out now what i'm doing is i'm putting these corners on here and what i want to do is see this one way over here I want to align that one to this one right here. And we're going to make a brand new corner. And when I mud this, thank you, Tim. When I mud this, 
it'll be a lot easier. What I'll do is I'll put accelerators in a, say a half a bucket of mud. I put the accelerators in a half a bucket of mud and I just one coat this, then I skim coat everything and my corners now are gonna be true and plumb. Way easier to do it this way. Give you an example. That guy right there, you can see how it's off here and there. See how it's off? And this corner here should line up with my corner. You see, I could almost stick my hand. Hello, folks. See there, that's how bad it all it is. Anyway, we're getting there. Simple, kind of fun. I love doing stuff like this. So when we get to do the actual plaster, we'll show you that too. All right, guys. Although we got a brown coat here with no scratch marks like, say, here, it will still adhere, but I'm just... I like to be on the safe side on everything we do, so we're putting a little bit of bonding agent. It would have adhered anyway through suction. And now what I'm doing is we got some real hot mud here. Look how hot this is, just mixed. When I say hot, I mean that's got accelerators in it. And now that our corner is right where I want it, what I'll generally do is I'll take it here. Once I get this horizontal corner, then, then I can do my vertical, but you gotta do the horizontal before you do the vertical. So, and again, in five minutes, this is gonna be hard as a rock because I've got luminite in this stuff. One more, Tim, please. Then after I get the last of this here, I'm gonna go underneath because this will be set solid. And underneath, I put a lot of uh, weldcrete to get that um, so it won't separate. So, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And one last one, Tim, please. I'll take yours. Give it to me. Okay, we're right here. And the true fun is feathering. When I come to feather this in, it's really wiggly. We're just gonna use regular mud, no hot mud. Okay guys, we're gonna show you how we do our corners now. Make believe corner. First I'm gonna put a little bit of mud right here. Put a little bit here, and then Jay's gonna hold that rod. We call it a rod, feather edge, T-bar, whatever you wanna call it. And we get this right where we want it. And it's gotta be wet. So now I'm gonna shove a whole bunch of mud under there. Get in there, get in there. Okay, we're shoving a whole bunch in there. Well, watch your fingers, blam. Okay, coming in, filling it up. We're filling it up full. Filling it up full. And what Jay's gonna do in a second is, Ready? hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, is he's gonna pull that up and away from me. That way it adheres. But before that, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up because I've got a rod this still. One more, one more trial for, and then he can pull up and I can rod this also. Okay, so okay, here we go. Now this is the final coat. Oh man, we got some rocks. Get rid of them rocks, rock, rock. Okay, we're going to try again. There we go. Pull this here. Now pull it up and away. And that should stay. Beautiful, beautiful. That's got accelerators in it. In 10 minutes, that's going to make us a corner. If you want to hand me that rod right behind you too. And last thing is... Um, the rod there is, I can use the rod or this. I prefer using a, uh, a Darby. Now I'm gonna take this Darby and come up, or here. Take it this way and come up. Take it this way and come up. Chew and plumb, guys, chew and plumb, that way. When this fella comes home, he'll say, whoa. And by the way, we've had neighbors over here. They said, man, 
Everything that guy does turns to gold. He is just great. We haven't seen him do anything ever wrong. And I said, actually, this wasn't wrong. It's just a little bit off. And it turns out he was watching some of our videos to get to this stage, which is pretty damn good, guys. That's a pretty good stage to be at to do all of this. It's, it's you got ceilings to deal with and corners. Pretty hard, so I give the guy a, a big eight. If he was a professional, I'd give him a three, but being a new guy, first time, he gets the big eight. Okay, folks, we are about to take lunch because this got a set for about 15 minutes. We didn't bother putting any retardants in this, but it will dry by suction. Even with Weldcrete on here, it'll still, it'll still, um, absorb so we're at a stage now where we've made all new corners and we've got to allow it time to do its thing and, and set if we mess with it too much it'll just fall down but if we give it time like say 15 minutes 20 have some something to eat or relax or go do something else then we just float it all right guys last thing we're doing is floating everything it's all true and plum and much better than it was now what we're doing here is this is wet stucco still uh, the weldcrete killed all the suction so uh, we took a lunch and it's still soft but that's okay now what we're doing is we're bringing out the aggregate giving it a float finish and we clean the metal a wee bit better than the last guy he made a mess everywhere but you can do that if it's your own house lastly i just take the float go this way and go this way to get a sharper edge now everything's true and plumb we're all set anyhow my name's kirk jason as usual on the camera and helped me uh, spread most of this as usual guys thank you for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one